Welcome to the Texas Instruments GUI Composer Overview. I am John Stevenson and with me I have Patrick Chong. Today we will be discussing a new feature in the TI Embedded Development Tool portfolio called GUI Composer, which is a tool that is used to create GUI applications for viewing and controlling embedded systems from a host environment. For those of you who are new to TI's embedded software and tools ecosystem, it is an area that TI has invested heavily in over the years. The ecosystem is comprised of runtime software, including real-time operating systems like TI RTOS, embedded Linux, and a multitude of software packages. There are development tools, including the Code Composer Studio, Integrated Development Environment, JTAG emulators, and development boards such as launch pads and evaluation modules. On top of this, there is a rich community providing expertise, turnkey solutions, product support, and training. The presentation today will focus on one of the features of the Code Composer Studio environment called GUI Composer. Whether it is part of a product demo or even a tool to help monitor or debug your application, there is often a need to have a simple host user interface that can visualize or even control target applications. This is where GUI Composer comes in. GUI Composer provides a framework to build and deliver rich HTML5 based GUI applications for embedded systems. GUI Composer enables the quick development and deployment of these applications. GUI Composer has a couple of main uses. You can create small, simple displays that can be used while you are debugging your application that give you more insight into what is going on within the device. Or you can create applications that run separately from the CCS environment. These are great for demonstrations and monitoring applications. GUI Composer generates user interfaces that are comprised of a set of HTML5 widgets. These widgets are then connected or binded to target variables or locations in the target system. When a control widget like a dial or slider has been connected to a target variable or address, any adjustments made to the widget will result in a change in that variable or location in the target system. For example, you could use a dial to change a variable that controls the speed of a motor. When a display widget like a gauge or graph is connected, then the value is read from the target system and then the value is displayed in the widget. The development environment allows you to quickly drag and drop from a palette containing a selection of widgets including dials, meters, and graphs and add them to your custom user interface. You can customize the widgets to get the exact look that you desire and then bind the widget to a target variable or address by adjusting the widget's properties. The generated user interface is an HTML5 GUI that can be viewed in a web browser or you use a generated application that leverages the GUI Composer runtime and an embedded browser. Under this, there is a lightweight web server that hosts the application. If using variables to access locations in the target system, the debug server is used to resolve the symbols. You can then use JTAG or a serial connection to perform the accesses. JTAG is often used if the device supports non-intrusive accesses over JTAG. Otherwise, you can use a serial connection, which requires a small monitor to be placed in the target application. In these scenarios, where the GUI application is initiating the request for data, we call it the program model. Alternatively, you can have the target system push data up to the user interface. This can be done via serial interface or in the future via Ethernet. This scenario where data is being streamed from the target back up to the host GUI application is called the streaming model. You can pick the solution that works best for your environment. Now that you have a little background information on how GUI Composer works, I'm going to hand things over to Patrick who will be demonstrating a couple of real applications that have been created using GUI Composer. Hi, my name is Patrick Chong. I'm one of the GUI Composer team developer. I'm about to show you a short demonstration of the IntraSpin application. 
on my desk, I have a Stellaris DRV8312 development kit connecting to the motor. And the DRV8312 is also connecting to my host PC through an USB. As you can see, after the application is launched, it first initializes the target and execute the initialization script, then follows by loading the program image onto the Stellaris device. Now, I'm going to switch to the main application page by selecting the application button at the top of this window. There are a number of different options that you can control how the motor spins and displays feedbacks where a motor expert can read and evaluate the capability of the motor. This application uses a simple widget such as a checkbox to the more complicated one such as a graph or a dial. I'm going to start the motor by enabling the checkbox at the bottom left of the screen. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the motor spinning on my desk, but you can see the motor's RPM at the top left of the screen. While the motor is spinning, you can also see on the current meter how much current the motor is drawn while it is spinning. Now I'm going to enable the graph by selecting these checkboxes at the bottom of the graph. At any time, I can pause any one of these graphs by selecting the whole checkbox. To adjust the motor speed, I can either use the dial or the number spinner widget, and the graph reflects how the motor responds to my input. To control the motor speed by velocity, I can select the velocity from the control mode drop down box. The dial and the number spinner widget are set to control the motor using the velocity mode. When I set the velocity to 0.3, the motor should be spinning at about 900 RPM. Now I'm going to switch the settings tab. There are other advanced options that you can adjust, such as RAM time, how much time it takes the motor spin to the maximum velocity, the RAM startup speed, the RAM ending speed, as well as other parameters that you can control the motor's behavior. And this concluded my demonstration of the IntraSpin application. Thank you for watching.